Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and oh my God, Russia is banning anime. We're gonna talk about that. Russia is banning several anime series, apparently because they're too violent, but you know, normally this wouldn't be such a huge deal, except we're seeing sort of the global ban on anime. We're seeing Australia ban anime, light novels and manga based on what they believe is underage uh, shenanigans. Uh, underage shenanigans, you know, and that led to a lot of uh, a lot of anime toys and whatever being pulled from Amazon, a lot of light novels being pulled, and a lot of people that are doing the banning of anime don't fully understand the shows, or it's just a, a parent's knee-jerk reaction to a show. Uh, so we're going to talk about that and sort of the um, the doubling down of individuals and, and media of slamming anime because it is popular. Anime and manga are seeing a massive resurgence in popularity. And because of that, it's problematic. It's on the radar. You know, when anime was kind of underground, we didn't get these kinds of complaints. But now that everybody's talking about anime, everybody's watching anime, and manga sales are through the roof again, uh, now it's time to start banning. And I, I think we're going to see some more uh, uh, banning going on or, or a major alter, alteration of Japanese uh, content over here in the States. It's just a matter of time. So before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, we're over 172,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. It is greatly appreciated. Uh, it really is. So we do talk about uh, anime. We talk about Disney. We talk about movies. Uh, we talk about video games, whatever interests us that day. So we're a pretty eclectic channel, but we do give you our opinions on what is going on in pop culture. So there are several versions of the story. This is from the Moscow Times. Uh, we've got Moscow Times talking about it. We've got um, Kotaku talking about it, and Gadgets talking about it. Uh, you know, other, other violent anime are being banned. So let's go to Moscow Times. Russia bans Death Note, uh, Inu Yashiki, Tokyo Ghoul, and more. Uh, also, Elf and Lead, I think, was banned. Uh, I thought at first it said Inuyasha. It's not Inuyasha. We didn't ban Inuyasha. Uh, so a Russian court has banned several popular animes, including Death Note, Tokyo Ghoul, and Inuyashiki Wednesday over claims that Russian teens reenact violent scenes depicted in cartoons. Where have we heard this before? Gamers have been hearing this for years. Mortal Kombat makes kids violent. Doom makes kids violent. And now it's anime. It's Death Note. Death Note is making kids violent. State prosecutors had also asked the court in St. Petersburg to ban Naruto, Elfin Lead, and Interspecies Reviewers in December. Okay. <laughs> now, Interspecies Reviewers obviously would be banned for other reasons besides violent, violent content. But Naruto? What? <laughs> Every episode contains cruelty, murder, and violence said the St. Petersburg court system in a December 18th statement that had registered five lawsuits against 49 websites. Uh, let's see. St. Petersburg's Kolpinski District Court ruled on Wednesday that Death Note and Inuyashiki be banned from distribution on two websites, while Tokyo Ghoul has only been banned on one website. According to the court system, the state-run RIA Novosti, Novosti News Agency reported that the court system specified the bans only affect the listed web addresses. The court continued hearing arguments Wednesday over the other three anime cartoons as well as popular Russian rapper Morgan Stern's meme-based song titled I Ate Grandpa. Well, that's not very nice. Russian parents have campaigned to ban Death Note as far back as 2013 after a 15-year-old girl with a collection of Death Note manga died by suicide. I think she probably had some other issues. I'm just going to say it. She had some other issues. I do not believe the anime was a factor in that uh, very unfortunate turn of events. This year, St. Petersburg Media reported that a teenage Death Note fan had fallen out of a window in what appeared to be a white dress shirt and red tie styled after the main character. Um, yeah, you know, uh, God. Okay, so this is in Russia, but it's not just Russia that is banning anime. Uh, again, you know, we've talked a lot about Australia. Australia 
is is going to town on you know some of the uh, the anime and the light novels that they feel are uh, uh, depicting underage persons doing things that they ought not do, even though some of those characters are explicitly uh, not in those kinds of relationships and or are technically over the age of 18, even though they're all fictional characters. Um, they said that uh, this is coming from the Canberra Times. They depict... They contain depictions of wide-eyed children, usually in school uniforms, engaged in blankety-blank stuff and poses, and often being blankety-blank abused. Um, it depends. Depends. I, I don't. I don't think No Game No Life showed that. Uh, they said the Japanese laws exempt manga and anime from exploitation laws because the images do not depict real children. Uh, in Australia, the production, possession, and distribution of, of that kind of material depicting a representation of people uh, or depicting a representation of a person who appears to be under 18. Now, this is this is a big issue with the uh, anime and manga band because we saw this kind of on, on Patreon too. We've seen it on some art sites that characters that look like they are potentially, potentially under the age of 18 uh, participating in certain kinds of acts, even if they're not, you know, because of the big eyes, they're like, oh my God, it's kitty stuff. And it's like, no, that's not actually the case. We've seen people have their Patreon accounts taken down. Um, we've seen games be banned. Uh, what was it? The SNK mobile game, the official mobile game. I think they shut the Twitter account down on it because it had uh, female characters that may or may not have been underage, I think. I'm not 100% sure on what's going on there, but it, it, they definitely are cracking down. Meanwhile, on Twitter, you know, there's some dubious stuff going on with real children, and they're not really doing anything about it. But I digress. That's not what we're here to talk about. Uh, what I think this is about is the popularity of anime and manga, and Geeky and I have been talking about this for a while, that anytime something becomes popular, something that's niche becomes popular, immediately there are calls to censor it, there are calls to ban it. There are numerous hit pieces written about it. Uh, a lot of it is just people trying to attach themselves like a parasite to the popularity of said thing. We saw this back in the 80s with Dungeons and Dragons and heavy metal in video games. And we're seeing it again. Video games are co the constant punching bag of, of uh, these Karens. But we're seeing it now because... You know, even the Hollywood Reporter, Variety, New York Times have been talking about the massive success of Demon Slayer. We're seeing the comic book sales numbers come out, and it's like 7 out of 10 of the top graphic novels or manga. So it clearly is huge. And, you know, the Karens are going to latch onto this because it's, it's problematic, and it gives them a sounding board. You know, again, Dungeons & Dragons, at the peak of its popularity, uh, I believe, back in the early to mid-80s, that's when you had all these, uh, you know, far right Christian organizations coming out and being like, kids are literally summoning demons in the basement and all this other crap. And you had that Tom Hanks made for TV movie where he was being brainwashed by the RPG and, and he was going to go off himself and all this crazy stuff. It's a moral panic. And I think we're, we're seeing it now with, with, uh, anime and it's definitely going to push here in the States. It already is. We're seeing you know, some series not get translated. I mean, we saw the, you know, the debacle with interspecies reviewers. Uh, we're seeing other, other uh, translations get uh, mangled, basically, because people are inserting Western social justice talking points into the, the translations. And some of the stuff's just not getting picked up, or we're pushing uh, Western artists, Western creators, and we're kind of, you know, doing the Tokyo pop and kind of rolling them into you know, stuff going on at Viz, like the High Republic. Uh, again, this is all trying to get, trying to kind of tame anime and manga, Japanese art form. And, and uh, we saw Crunchyroll, how they had the ear of, uh, you know, some of the studios in Japan. And they were basically telling them, no, people want more stuff like High Guardian Spice and X-Arm. That's what you should do. And they were listening and they shouldn't listen because, um, you know, they just shouldn't. It's not good business. But yeah, I mean, when you've got articles like this, this is true. More kids admire Tanjiro from Demon Slayer than their own parents. Yeah, you're gonna put you're gonna put a huge target on yourself because uh, 
you know, we can't have that. We can't have this art form have that much influence and not be able to control it for sure. But we're starting to see, you know, more hit pieces. And we've been kind of chronicling this for the last two-ish years on this channel. We said there probably will be an anime gate. And that was before the, the Vic Mignogna situation, all the drama with the, the voice actors and all of that. We said that there was going to be an anime gate in the fact that there was going to be some kind of attempt to control anime and anyone who disagreed with the people that want to control anime disagreed with the journalists, disagreed with the, the dub studios. Uh, anyone who disagreed with them would get smacked down. And, and we kind of have seen this now. Sci-Fi Wire put out, and they're, this isn't even around anymore, but fangirls, they shut this blog down because it was such a failure. But but they put out hit pieces talking about how fascist, fascist anime is. It's inherently fascist because of the military uniforms. You know, um, we can't have depictions of anime Hitler as a bad guy. We can't, we can't talk about this, even though Japan would have a better understanding, I think, than a lot of uh, countries about, about World War II. Uh, you would think that they would. They would completely understand uh, some of the nuance, if there is any nuance in, in World War II, given everything that happened. And it's still a topic that they talk about in movies. I mean, it's, you know, it was a huge uh, cultural shift in Japan, World War II. I mean, you had Japan before WW2 and you had Japan after. And a lot of the themes of anime and manga, you know, in the decades afterwards dealt with world war ii or were related in some way to to world war ii i mean we, we saw it so yeah it's it's definitely going to leave an impact i guess in the uh the memory of of the japanese i think more so than than americans um you know other than those who who served overseas or whatever but you know we're seeing we're seeing you know articles like this just popped up the other day you know what we can learn about men through problematic anime they're already starting you know Again, I mean, this isn't anything new, but it's 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 beginning to ramp up. But boys get out of shows like this, and I think we're we're talking about uh, shows like My Hero Academia and Demon Slayer. Is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon, uh, etc.? What boys get out of this? What boys get out of shows like this is a problematic safe space. Whether a more sexualized America or a more traditionalist Japan, men in particular, when we were young boys, grew up with tremendous anxiety about the opposite sex. We feel like we have no one to talk to about our want of companionship or fear of rejection and find media like films, video games, and anime. The only space is to learn about gender dynamics and explore sexual desire. Uh, it's, it's horrifying to watch anime because, you know, you might get a, a stirring down below. And so it's basically saying that men become awful because they are, are watching problematic anime instead of interfacing with real women, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. But this is it right here. Wrestling with our ambivalence can bring clarity, showing us the ways media is informed by culture and how it can uh, affect culture. Anything that can affect culture, anything that has an impact on culture, these people want to get a hold of. Right. Um, and that's the truth. And that's why I think, you know, even though we're seeing the banning and the censorship uh, primarily in other countries now, it's going to come to the U.S. It already kind of is, but it's going to get worse because there is massive, massive influence in anime and manga. And Hollywood has already caught on like a lot of kids. They're tuning out from Cartoon Network. They're tuning out from, you know, American made Western cartoons because Western cartoons at this point are basically made for Portland. Let's be honest. And they're watching anime and manga. So these people are going to come. Uh, they're going to come in and they're going to to try to tell you that uh, anime is problematic. And we need to remake anime with our Western sensibilities. I mean, geez, Anime NYC a couple of years ago banned cosplay of Tanya the Evil. But they promoted a film festival of Tanya the Evil on Twitter. But it's fascist and it might make people feel bad. It might make people feel bad. It might make the people in Portland in New York, uh, who were not even alive during World War II, feel bad that uh, this cartoon character is wearing uh, wearing military garb because, you know, fascism. I mean, it's, it's getting ridiculous. We're going to see it over here. I guarantee it. We're going to see some laws, especially now. We're going to see some laws enacted that are like, you can't have content like this because it's disparaging to women and it makes people feel bad. And also, there are too many white people in your Japanese shows. 
even though they're all supposed to be Japanese. Uh, that's coming next, I'm sure. I've already seen, you know, kind of the prelude to that. There aren't enough black folks in Japanese anime. So now the next thing will be like, it's all white people. It's like, no, they're technically not. They're technically not white. And they're technically not underage either. They're technically not even real people. They're just lines on paper. Anyway, gonna wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk to you later.